Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I, uh, I want to share with you uh, the experience we had in our practice, Dr. Healing and me. And uh, as you have seen on the program, uh, the time is uh, short to show you everything or many things we have been seen, but there are also the meet expert uh, session where you can go and uh, have a look on the recent development. So if uh, next year ISOWOG will have its 25th anniversary, we'll have on uh, 3D ultrasound uh, also 25 years uh, uh, history where this is how uh, things started, where for one volume, uh, one complete night was needed to calculate the images. Today we'll have, uh, we are having very, uh, very quick image uh, calculation uh, within several volumes per second. So you see that technology is not only in private life, but also in, uh, arrived in medicine. And uh, uh, what, what is happening now uh, since several years that we start uh, by uh, learning to do ultrasound by looking to the face, but very soon we know that we can use it for several things like tomography imaging, omniview, VCI, calculate volumes, having a projection and display. And all these things are really now like what we know as an app in a machine, you can you have a volume and you can choose this or that feature uh, to start. And uh, Bernard Benoit, for me, the pioneer on the field of ultrasound, gave me this slide. And uh, when we are visiting uh, a course together, he shows such a slide and say, you know, ultrasound 3D is like a Swiss knife. And this is where you can get a volume and you can cut and uh, do everything you want. And if I want to des describe this new system today, I will call it Swiss Knife uh, 2.0, and I will add an, even an S on it for showing that it's very, 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 very special. So if we uh, show you the technical aspect, because we'll not have a lot uh, on this, you can ask people, engineers, to tell you. But uh, if you are using a normal transducer, you have one row of crystals. And the new system here has, for uh, uh, doing the scan, 64 crystals in one uh, level and 128 in the other one. So we have a high technology probe you are using. And we'll show you uh, some uh, images uh, which can be acquired with this system. So if you have a system not having mechanical but electronic uh, 4D, then the first thing you will see, think about is how are the fetal movements. And very soon you will realize that these are really very quick images you can acquire, uh, like for uh, with a larger volume, like uh, fetal uh, face and baby moving, you will have uh, between uh, 7 and uh, 10 volume per second easily. But also uh, you can uh, increase the resolution to see some uh, uh, mass of the, the fetus, like in this case. And uh, you can imagine that uh, the first thing I will uh, do and I was doing is to check the heart. And this is a heart here at 28 uh, volumes per, per second. You can do it uh, on a live uh, mode and you can uh, examine this fetus. You can uh, add the uh, display, uh, the surface display. You can look at inside the heart and you can move the volume to look at out and in and you can cut uh, as, you want, as you want and, and how you want because you have rapid image uh, uh, calculation. And this is here uh, a volume that you see you are, we are running at 37 images per second where you can scroll from the upper abdomen and you can move the transducer to get to the great vessels. That means this is today feasible and uh, we, uh, we can rely on, uh, on a live probe to look at the heart. And uh, Dr. DeVore will speak today and uh, the next days in his master class on, uh, on this technique, and which is uh, very exciting. We can use this also to uh, get uh, the usual other planes, like by using OmniView, and you can have a look to the valves uh, while here scanning the, the four chamber view. But also, you can add color or power Doppler to it and have a view either on a single plane or uh, in the volume. You can switch to uh, tomographic imaging, rotate the image, and have a complete look at the tomography where you have the complete view within uh, these things. And Dr. Abahamad will also show you some uh, recent aspects on the VCA development under this condition. But this is theory. In practice, uh, ideally, you will have a fetus uh, not moving, and you would be uh, happy if you have uh, a good uh, live scan. But if the baby is moving, you need a very quick stick. And this is the new stick uh, we'll uh, see later on, which is the e-stick, which is very rapid, uh, up to three seconds. And then you can have a sim simple calculation. 
An, an exciting tool is the, the biplane, where in, uh, in addition to the plane you are scanning, you can have an orthogonal plane. Some people think, do I ne really need this? But once you start using a technique like this, you will get uh, used to, because you will have a look on the same time to the profile, and here you see the palette. You can get a cross-section of the eyes I showed you before. This is why once you have a new tool, you will try it, and then you will find a, a, a place in your everyday work for this, even for the heart, by getting a longitudinal view, you can take the line and scroll up and down from the four chamber to get the three vessel within within a sweep while looking here to the non-moving baby. So you can uh, you can I guess use the biplane to for uh, several purposes. And I show you here another uh, application like. Uh, the septum, where you can uh, see exactly the line along the septum. And it was obvious that the first case I had then after, after this, when there was a, a ventricular septal defect here in this plane, then I was uh, trying to show it in the other plane as well. And you see here that uh, the VST was seen in one and the other plane, and, uh, which was so shown clearly. But if the fetus is like another way, you place the line along the septal defect and you confirm it in the other plane, and this at a high resolution picture. I think another uh, interesting application could be, for, them, for example, the level of the spina bifida where you have it here on 2D and you, you see where you are scrolling and you can recognize the level at the spina bifida at this plane. And there are, of course, other applications I will not uh, go through, but this was an interesting case. I was looking to the gender and uh, I was surprised that on the other plane I saw what uh, the girl was doing here, as you, <laughs> as you see. I haven't seen it first because I was still focusing on that, but the lady was uh, seeing that the other plane. This is also a potential use. So uh, uh, one of my preferred uses is the so-called VCIA. Uh, that means what I call a scan uh, with, a uh, with a slice. In general, when you do 2D, you have one plane and you have uh, acquiring volumes. You have a kind of a large box where the complete information of the box is rendered. But what you can decide to do is instead of having one plane, you can have, a, let's say, narrow slice of, uh, a slice of several planes which are uh, niche or other with, a, uh, uh, let's say, width of these between 2 to 3 millimeters and uh, 10 or 15 millimeters. And what you can, and a good example to explain you this is, for example, a hand. If you look at the hand, it's not rarely open in one plane and you have to move up and down until you see the complete hand. But if you take a slice and you make a projection like the, tra that, like the transparency mo mode, then you can see it here easily. And look at here, this is a, an example. You see here the, the hand in the two, uh, uh, in, by changing the position of the transducer. But if you get a VCI, in this case, it is six millimeters that you can see the complete hand. And yesterday, uh, Larry was showing us on his uh, live demo. Another example he was citing, and I show you the example of this, the hemivertebra. You see here, because we have a slice of the spine, you see uh, the, the complete uh, part, and this is here the region of the hemivertebra, which uh, is easy to recognize and is highlighted by, by this uh, slice. I show an example which uh, make uh, uh, things, uh, let's say, well illustrated. This is a descending aorta seen on the left side of the body. If you go to the right side, you see the inferior vena cava. Both are not in the, in the same plane. If I take a slice and make a kind of uh, projection of minimal mode, I can show both together within one, one picture. And if I decide not to start to continue with six millimeter, but to make the inversion mode, and by getting eight millimeter, then I can uh, demonstrate with a high re resolution and with 20 images per second, the in IVC and the descending aorta within one view to have a good documentation of both. So uh, my favorite, of course, is going to be, uh, at the end, color Doppler with HD Live. And this is here an example of an acquisition with the glass body mode with stick. Now I decided to look at only the grayscale information and moving from right to left, you see here the mitral valve with the uh, fish moth sign and then you, you, can, you see the stomach and then you can scroll uh, back to the right side, but then you can add uh, the color Doppler and using here, as you see this uh, torch, you can change the direction of light. And this is here how the vessel appear. You see the pulmonary vein, the descending aorta, the inferior vena cava, the ductus venosus. And this is a projection where you can recognize the relationship of the vessels one uh, to each other and that you can rotate the volume and even change the direction of light. So if you want to see the lower part and these two uh, uh, pulmonary veins are not well appearing in this plane, but then you can rotate everything to have the best uh, look to, to the heart as you want. 
So in other words, what I'm trying to uh, show you here is the same what we know from images or from uh, pictures on, on cardiology where you see the right and the left ventricle and the crossing of the great vessels like in a model but here in true life in a fetus at 22 weeks. Some uh, clinical examples, this is uh, one you can, uh, I'm sorry, this is this one you can see here at 22 weeks, and today I showed you on a live demo that if you have good conditions, you can even show it in early gestation with the crossing of the vessels within, within one view. And this is here a case, clinical case of a tetralogy of phallo where you recognize the narrow pulmonary artery in comparison to the dilated aorta, or in this case where you are focusing on the vessels, the aorta arising and the pulmonary artery crossing over it in comparison to a transposition of the great arteries where both vessels here are having a parallel course to each, uh, uh, to each other, the pulmonary, as you see here, arising from the left ventricle, and you see even the bifurcation. With the effect of light, you can have a better impression of, uh, of depth for these images. And this is here another case with the hypoplastic left heart syndrome, when you see the reversal flow in the aorta, not, as, uh, uh, not very good seen on, on a regular plane, but here you see with this uh, technique is uh, extremely well recognized. And for tiny vessels, a ramification of the aortic arc. Here, the aberrant subclavian artery. And this is double aortic arc. We see the right arc, the trachea, the left arc, and the ductus arteriosus as a, at the third arc in this uh, plane. So, and then last but not least, for this clinical example, uh, getting a view from the left side, you see the IVC, the inferior vena cava, the two pulmonary veins, the descending aorta. In this case, there is no uh, inferior vena cava, but you see here behind the aorta, the uh, uh, as it goes continuity, having direction toward the heart, and this is here the descending toward the body. So I want to finish by showing you a clinical example how uh, I can use the, the, the machine as a Swiss knife and how, if you have even a simple case, but how uh, uh, you can use the 3D and different uh, tools to demonstrate uh, things. So this is, uh, let's say, a picture of a, uh, of a head and you, you see a large cystic structure within the head. The experienced person will say, I know it, is, it looks like a arachnoid cyst. Some beginners say, but it could be also vein of gallon aneurysm. But let's say if you take, first of all, a tomographic uh, imaging view, then you have a complete view of the brain. You see that in the upper part, the cortex and lateral ventricle are fine, and the posterior part looks fine. Then you can, uh, you are, uh, you can use the biplane to see here the surrounding structure, and you see the shape is uh, cystic or uh, circular in all directions, and you see here the cortex appears well, then you can uh, use the omni view to see the relationship of this uh, cyst in comparison to the corpus callosum. That means it is just under the corpus callosum where our uh, gallon will be present in the posterior part. And then you can use the PCIA plane as a, as a slice, and you see the relationship to the cerebral peduncles. And I was trying here to get a view to the uh, chiasma, but I was hindered by the shadowing at this stage. And then uh, you can add the VCIA with, the, with an inversion mode to see the shape of this, uh, of, of this uh, structure with the volume. I could have also calculated with the sono AVC the volume of the cyst. And then moving transvaginal to see uh, the appearance here and adding color Doppler to see the vessels surrounding. And you see here, you can clearly see that there are the two uh, pericalosal artery present in the, this fetus. You see the internal cerebral vein, and uh, you see here the posterior, uh, the vertebral uh, and basilar artery going there. And then by uh, calculating a volume, this is the result, and this is how it appears on a 3D, and especially that you can appreciate also the presence of the both internal cerebral artery. In the other case, if there was a true vein of gallon aneurysm, you will have seen a lot of colors in the brain. And this is another example I've seen in June at 22 weeks, where you see the large dilation of the vessels and the large uh, vessels within the brain, and with his, this cystic structure of a vein of gallon aneurysm. So I would like to thank you for your attention and hope make you curious to use this machine.